Tago, Mileno and MJ Pemu Coronavirus. Congenalen and MJ Pemu Coronavirus. If you want to receive monies from UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world, Supersonics Money Transfer has got you covered. With the largest payout network in the Gambia, you can now receive your monies anywhere you are from Kartong to Koina with less hassle. Yes! You can receive monies from your family and friends in UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world with our safe, secure, fast and convenient service that offers you the largest selection of payout locations in the Gambia. Supersonics Money Transfer. We are currently in 34 African countries and counting, giving you quality money remittance services that are second to none. Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple Store today to download the Supersonics Money Transfer app and enjoy excellent money transfer services only with Supersonics. Jet Halis Bayeko UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland, Ak Adina Wangal Kep, Supersonics Money Transfer, Nyungti and Akien. Ak Yune Kai Halis Bugena Magasi Gambia, Munga Jet Halis Fepe Fingane Bayeko Katong Bekwina, the Doche and Ben Jeffe Jeffe. Wow! Munga Jet Halis Bayeko Tisa Aimboka, Ak Andijama, Neka Chi UK, Europe, US, Canada, Switzerland, Ak Adina Wangal Kep, Ak Sun Yune Kai Halis Bumaga Binga Hamne, the for war. Gau Tenopale, Fisibir Gambia. The professionalism and transparency of your work is to be commended and will continue to be of critical importance to the success of the coming electoral cycle. Finally, let me commend the international idea and His Excellency Dr. Chambers for this initiative to unite presidential candidates around the common goal of conducting a peaceful and transparent presidential election that will allow the sovereign people of the Gambia to freely choose their next leader. Your initiative to elaborate a code of conduct to be signed today by the presidential candidates builds upon and complements important work that the Interparty Committee has been carrying out with the support of the UN over the past months and indeed years. Last month, the Interparty Committee convened a high-level national stakeholders forum in support of peace and credible elections in the Gambia, during which leaders of political parties committed themselves to the highest standards of electioneering in the presence of key national stakeholders and high-level observers from the UN, the ECOWAS, and the AU. The leaders of all 18 officially registered political parties in the Gambia have now signed a peace pledge, also known in the Janjambure Peace Accord, developed by the Interparty Committee with the support of UNDP, NDI, and ECOWAS, which build upon the foundations of the Constitution, the electoral law, the IPC's Memorandum of Understanding, and the IEC Code of Ethics, and which places particular emphasis on the importance of abstaining from inflammatory language during electoral campaign. The Code of Conduct that presidential candidates will sign this afternoon will be an important additional bulwark to help ensure that the December 4 presidential election will be characterized by substantive political debate and that presidential candidates and their supporters will be held to be to the highest standards on the campaign trail on election day and during the immediate post-election period. The foreseen joint outreach actions will strengthen ownership of these important peace pledges 
to enable a conducive environment of the development of peace, inclusive, free and transparent elections throughout the electoral process. To conclude, again, I congratulate and commend the presidential candidates, the International IDEA and Dr. Chambers for this initiative, and we look forward to a peaceful, transparent, free and fair presidential election to be decided by the of the Gambia. I thank you all. I must acknowledge the presence of the co-chair of the Inter-Party Committee, Honorable Amul Nyasi. Sir, you are welcome. And now we want to welcome the chairperson of the National Election Response Group, uh, Tommy, Dr. Daryl Tommy, to give his goodwill message. You're welcome, sir. All protocol duly observed. When I grow up, I would like to be like my brother and friend, Evan Chambers, <laughs> since the ticket, okay? I promise you, I'll say no more. I promise you. Okay? Now, I must say that the code of conduct for us, its spirit is enshrined in a national anthem for the Gambia, our homeland. It is our homeland we don't want to have after election a non-state homeland. We strive and walk and pray. That's the spirit of unity culture. We Gambians grew up with, and that is what is enshrined in that code of conduct that we designed. Now, I'm so pleased to really congratulate my six brothers and friends who have gone through the first stage by being nominated. And I know, and I know again, that they will do a good work. I am the chief servant of the National elect, elect, Election Reporting Group. I work for my people. I listen to them and collectively we implement and we've been working and praying that the election would be peaceful fair and just to go to my script first of all i would like to thank idea international idea for the opportunity to give this statement here at this crucial time of our transition. And I must say that I talk not for me, but on behalf of NEG. NEG is the umbrella body that encompasses all the stakeholders in ensuring that the elections are free and fair. And we are grateful to our host Walep, who have been there for us since the beginning, okay? And we use that platform to make sure that you hear the domestic voice in the election reporting. I would like to thank these political representatives here present and to wish them luck and to say that the ink that they would use to sign the agreement will change from black to gold. Immediately it is signed. That's how we value this accord that is going to be signed. Effort to conduct peaceful and credible elections remain the focus of various local and international stakeholders in the Gambia and particularly in NEC. Ahead of the elections, there are concerns over rising tensions around the electoral process, including incidents of diversion, political rhetoric, and tension between and within political parties. That's what it is. Two days ago, 
a colleague of mine called me from Arusha and was asking me how did the nomination go. I said, I want to reaffirm that God is a Gambian. Do respect Bishop and Imam. God is a Gambian and God has seen us through. We used, as a boy growing up, which some of us were witness, we used to say salimentary. Now it's more than salimentary. We have God with us and for us and by us in the entire process. Ladies and gentlemen, I am excited about the prospect of conducting peace and violent free polls. But the challenges ahead are daunting. For example, the exploitation of the social media space as a mobilization and propaganda tool for violent communication has negative impact on the peaceful, on the peaceful conduct of the 4th December polls. This, as the religious people would say, is a synod. Everybody has its own role to play. And we don't downplay the role of the media. Please, 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 let's put a useful, the right foot forward and make sure that we promote the signing of the peace pledge is about trust building. And I commend all the political parties for signing it. You are sending a strong message and signal to your constituencies that the Gambia is bigger than all of us. You are demonstrating true and genuine statesmanship that is needed at this crucial and critical stage. Finally, this election is just the beginning of a process. And I'm sure all the candidates seated here are praying that whoever wins inherits a peaceful country and not a country that they would have to start rebuilding. I thank you all and God bless. Will message will be received from the Honorable Ali Umomangai, Chairperson of the Independent Electoral Commission. Ambassadors and commissioners, members of the high table, this is candidates, members of the CSO coalition on elections, members of the media, this is invited guests, all protocols as well observed. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed gratifying for me to attend this very important occasion. This signing ceremony cannot come at a more fitting time when the IEC is poised to conduct 2021 election in a fixed, fixed time. It may interest you to, to know that the IEC recently concluded six weeks long general voter registration exercise which produced an up-to-date and accurate voter register. The voting process has been successfully completed with the circle of the voters list by the rising magistrate who were appointed by the Office of the Chief Justice of the Gambia. Having closed the chapter on voter registration, a new chapter has been opened in the whole process, which focuses on the election of 4 December 2021. Nominations of candidates were ahead, which also paved way for the start of the election campaign on 9th November 2021, and polling shall be conducted on 4th December 2021. The Gambia has recently witnessed an increase in the number of registered political parties, which can now be linked to the opening of the democratic space for greater political competition through multi-party elections. We have registered 18 political parties. Ladies and gentlemen, the election code of conduct has been embedded in the election laws of the Gambia. As such, all parties and candidates are required to fully comply with provisions during elections. It is compliance is compliance 
was also part of the nomination criteria for every candidate during the election. The election code of conduct seeks to deliver peaceful, free and fair elections. Most candidates have observed its requirements in the first electoral cycle. We expect such compliance to be replicated during the 2021 election. This peace accord reinforces the code of conduct and encourages all candidates to be peaceful, law-abiding, and to avoid all violent acts. It also entreats all candidates to resort to legal means in the electoral process. The Commission calls on all political parties and candidates to adhere to this very important peace accord. I would like to take the opportunity to recognize the tireless sacrifices played by the entire idea and other development partners. In conclusion, we want to assure all political parties and candidates a willingness to fully co collaborate with all stakeholders and deliver free and fair transparent election to the government people. I also wish to take the opportunity to thank the IC staff. Our electoral process is so that I'm always voicing out. This is one of the most transparent, accurate, and credible elections throughout the whole world. Everything is witnessed. As you know, election starts with voting. And to vote, you must have a voter's card. And we use this voter's card free of charge on the spot. And come election day, party agents are allowed to witness every process of the voting and the county. And these party agents also sign the resource sheets. We, in turn, they communicate to their respective headquarters. I, as a zoning officer, will be the last to know the results. So it's so transparent and accurate that I please flow on all local parties to conduct their campaigns and to advise all their members and supporters that because of its transparency and clarity, there must be no problems during and after the elections. The restores been announced, everybody will know, even though I know as a running officer, that party A of Mr. EY has won, has won the elections. So on that note, I wish to thank also the staff of the IEC for the work they are doing. They work 10 to 12 hours a day. And Thank you all very much. May God bless you and may God give us a free, fair, and transparent election. Thank you. Honorable um, for that statement. At this juncture, I would like to invite the reading of the Code of Conduct by Honorable Elizabeth Renner. Honorable <laughs> Chambers give some remarks. He is one of the chosen eminent people on this occasion of the Code of Conduct signing ceremony. Excellency, would you please join us? Very much. I will also stand on the protocol already established. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I will also stand on the protocol already established. I join in very warmly welcoming you all to today's signing ceremony. We gathered here this afternoon Jerusalem event. The signing of a code of conduct by the six presidential candidates in the 4th December presidential elections is historic. It is yet another mark of the new democratic dispensation in the Gambia. This is the first time in the history of the country that all presidential candidates 
are voluntarily undertaken by signing of a code of conduct to moderate their behavior and that of their followers or supporters before, during, and after the elections. I'm personally highly elated for the opportunity to be associated with this event. Indeed, I deem it a great honor to have been invited by the government of the Gambia and International IDEA to serve as the lead eminent person for the national dialogue process that has produced the code of conduct. In this exercise, I've been ably assisted by two eminent Gambians, the Honorable Mrs. Elizabeth Brenner and Mr. Osman Yabo, whose wisdom and sense of balance I have come to admire and which I want to recognize. Elections are important mechanisms in democratic and peace processes of every nation. This year's presidential elections is unique as it is taking place in a new democratic space. This offers hope to the Gambian people. The challenges facing the Gambian political process are typical of most transitional democracies in the region. Well over, electioneering periods are often marked by increased tensions. All these need to be well managed to ensure the Gambia emerges as the real winner so that the country can move forward to tackle other developmental challenges. Since September, we have engaged all relevant actors, the IEC, the IPC, political parties, civil society organizations, the media, security agencies, and faith-based organizations in a consultative process. The ideas, concerns, and aspirations expressed have been synthesized into the document. Key institutions, particularly the IEC, have so far carried out their mandates satisfactorily despite challenges. I would like to commend them, and in particular, Mr. Chairman, who is here with us today, and to urge them to endeavor to attain the highest standards of professionalism in the conduct of the elections. In the same vein, I would like to appeal to security forces to provide adequate security to all the candidates and to citizens. Call on the media to avoid sensational reportage and to abide by the ethics of their profession. The code of conduct to be signed by presidential candidates recognizes the existing ones under the IPC, adhered to by all political parties. Today, the six presidential candidates are making a solemn pledge, demonstrating their commitment to work for the preservation of the Gambia's young democracy. They are undertaking to conduct themselves in a manner as to ensure credible, peaceful, and participative elections. The candidates are holding themselves accountable to ensure issues-based campaigns devoid of hate speech, inflammatory language, or actions that incite tribal, religious, or other sectarian sentiments likely to lead to violence, division, or disruption of the cherished peace that Gambians are enjoying. They also commit themselves and their party and their political parties for those who are party flag bearers to ensure that their party faithful followers or supporters conduct themselves in a manner that contributes to maintaining peace and stability before, during, and after the December presidential elections. Above all, the code of conduct binds signatories to accept the outcome of the elections as will be announced by the IEC and to seek redress 
to grievances arising through constitutional and legal means by due process of law. Barely 24 hours after the coup d'etat of 22nd July 1994, as Deputy Foreign Minister of Ghana, together with the Foreign Minister of Nigeria, Alaji Baba Ghana Kingibe, and the then Executive Secretary of ECOWAS and current Speaker of Parliament of Sierra Leone, the Honorable Abbas Bundu, I was a member of the first ECOWAS delegation to visit the Gambia. Then, roll forward. On 21st January 2017, I, as head of the UN Office for West Africa, was part of the delegation dispatched to Banjul to negotiate the departure of the former president after his 22 years reign in power. Both of these occasions were harrowing experiences to be told on another day, on another occasion. Today, as fate will have it, I am witnessing a momentous, happy event, signaling the democratic strides the Gambia has made in barely five years. Many of the reforms embarked upon in the new dispensation with the strong support of the UN, uh, as has been told us by uh, the UNRC, particularly the UN Peacebuilding Commission and other development partners occurred under my watch as head of UNOWAS. The country has received diverse support from the international community towards constitutional and institutional reforms and transitional justice. We're in a new political dispensation with burgeoning of political parties and competing interests we need to be managed constructively to consolidate the relative peace in the country. This initiative by International IDEA, with the support of key development parties, partners, notably the UK government, is part of a contribution to peace building and entrenchment of democracy. Much has been achieved, but these past years have been a transitional period. Much remains to be done to stabilize the country and consolidate the democratic gains or dividends. I would particularly single out the need to truly empower women to fully harness their potentiality <laughs> in all walks of public life. To achieve that, the Gambia must continue to enjoy peace, justice, and stability. And that is exactly what the six presidential candidates who are signatories to the Code of Conduct pledged to do. I congratulate each one of them for this demonstration of patriotism and wish them success in their political campaigns. It is my firm belief that this year's elections shall be peaceful and the Gambia shall remain the smiling coast of Africa. Long live the Gambia, long live ECOWAS, long live Africa, and I thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you very much, sir. Now I see and know why Dr. Chambers loves Gambia so much. He's been in and out of the country. And I hope one of the, uh, whoever wins on December 5th would uh, do the needful uh, for Dr. Chambers. I think he's Gambian at heart. So we salute you and uh, we honor you for all you do for our beloved country. I now have uh, the pleasure to invite uh, a very good friend of mine, my elder, uh, Mr. Usman Yabo, to come and give his remarks. Mr. Yabo.
Um, chairman and co-chair, um, allow me to recognize our team leader, whom we have been working together for the past weeks, who is no other person than Dr. Chambers. Um, and also, I want to recognize the presence of all the six presidential aspirant candidates. Uh, my co-local facilitator, Honorable Mrs. Rena, Chairman of IEC, representative of the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Mr. Keta, the two religious leaders, Imam Ture and Bishop, and our new uh, director, regional director for Adia, Dr. Robert. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to say welcome to ambassadors, commissioners, representatives from the UN system and other partners for your continuous support and you for you being here today. It is with great humility and deep of sense of honor to have the privilege to speak to you on a matter that deals with the very life and destiny of Gambia, Marala, the Gambia. For that matter, let me first of all exp express my heartfelt appreciation to the former Equas UN envoy. Dr. Ewan Chambers for his leadership and commitment for the Gambia long before this day. This morning we were in a room and somebody said, Dr. Chambers, you are now a Gambia. And he's been record here so many times. Dr. Chambers, you are a Gambian now. <laughs> Having been together with him in this noble mission, I was hugely inspired and encouraged by his foresight and desire for the Gambian people that I wish to let him know that he would go down in history as one of those who made invaluable contributions to the progress, peace, and stability of the Gambia. To the head of political parties present here today, let me take this opportunity to also express my sincere thanks and appreciation for your cooperation and ex express commitment to this initiative manifested throughout our engagement with you and by your presence here today. To me, this demonstrates your realization of the urgency and the exigency of the country as this most critical time of our political history. I also wish to thank the Gambian government through the Minister of Justice, um, as well as indeed international idea for their support and leadership in recognizing the need to ensure a peaceful election given our turbulent background. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we are seated here is because of our recent political history and experiences 
when the people of the Gambia decided to put an end to 22 years of the authoritarian rule in 2016. We entered into a current dispensation in 2017 with a great ray of hope and promise for a better Gambia in unity, peace, and reconciliation. Since 2017, while much has been achieved, we launched a robust transitional justice funded by our partners. It is also concern <coughs> sorry. It is also concerning that our society is hugely polarized along political, ethnical, religious, and other sexual lines. There is nothing worse than endangering the peace, stability, and unity of a society than environment of unhealthy political polarization and intolerance, especially as we head to elections. It is for this reason that the role and contribution of political parties and their leaders and supporters are paramount in building and strengthening an environment of peace and stability. The Gambia is a democratic republic in which government is formed by the opinions of the electorate. This proposes that there will be various political parties established and the sharing of divergent descending opinions as we seek to promote our vision of the Gambia. This is what constitutes democracy, which has no space for hate speech, divisive and sectarian politics, and indeed demands that we all stand together to refrain from such menaces that may come from our party supporters and leaders alike, or any other citizen. Therefore, as we come together in this historical moment to sign this code of conduct, I wish to enjoin all political leaders, in particular, not just um, not not just uh, those sorry, not those speak out against tribal politics, intolerance, insult, but also go further to create their own code of conduct or translate this code of conduct that they are signing into the language that they are supported to understand. In order to strengthen accountability, I ask the political parties enforce this code of conduct by imposing sanctions to hold leaders and supporters who violate this code of conduct. Our political leaders must be seen hard in giving due regards and respect to each other as so as to positively influence supporters to act in like manner towards each other. I urge party leaders and candidates that if they have to disagree with each other, to do it so with civility and refrain from caricaturing and demonizing each other. Above all, I urge all political parties and leaders not only sign this code of conduct today, but also ensure total adherence to it at all times. I urge you to utilize the mechanism of addressing embedded in this code of conduct and not to ignore it, only to restore unhealthy responses. For my brothers and sisters from the civil society, which I come from, and I'm still part of it, you have a big responsibility. You would act as monitors, you would act as informers, you would act as journalists. So I urge you all 
to be responsible enough to ensure that what we are working towards, peace of the nation is maintained. I wish each and every political party also and candidate the best of luck in the election. I have no doubt, I pray to Allah that we shall go into the election and march out of it in peace, stability, and unity. Allah guide us and thank you. Very much, Mr. Yabo, for that well uh, reflective and foresight um, speech. Without any further ado, we would like to move to the next part of the, um, the agenda, which is to look into the code of conduct. I believe each and every one of you have received a copy. We'd, no? Okay, not here. Well, we'd like to thank our UN partners for working on um, making the translation for all the documents, which would be also shared with the media. I understand it will be translated into five local languages. So we thank you very much for that. We would like, now like to call upon Honorable Elizabeth Renner, who will be actually reading the Code of Conduct today. Honorable, can you please join us? Copy like um, a poet that likes to be a cook. May I do so by trying to do what I was very good at when I was younger. That is hop, step, and jump. So I'm going to hop, step, and jump. And with permission of everyone here concerned, skip. Um, the protocol, not that I do not respect every single person who is here, because for me, I always say everybody is honorable until you prove otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I would want to continue with the given, and that is to read the code of conduct which has been prepared um, for the candidates. Before doing so, however, with your permission, um, Madam and Muse MC, I would like to add my voice to those who have congratulated the six candidates who are, have been selected to be presented to the people for nomination. I wish you all the luck. And um, a lot has been said to you, and I'm sure in your own dreams, you have thought of a lot, and um, God will answer all the prayers as is best, not just for you, but for the garden. May I also um, congratulate all those who have been involved in preparing this code of conduct, but especially the parties themselves, the CSOs, the media, and in fact, all the people who were involved in the deliberations um, when I, um, IDA invited the cross-section of this country to make sure that um, whatever was going to appear in this code would be reflecting what the Gambia wants. So this code of conduct is not something that is coming from above, it's not um, manner from heaven falling down on the laps of the um, party of the candidates for them to sign. It is something which actually belongs to all of us, all Gambians. And therefore, I would want to say, even though at the end of the day, the candidates are going to sign, I think every Gambian, I believe, not even think, that every Gambian is a custodian of this code of conduct. Every Gambian has the responsibility to make sure this country continues to be peaceful. With peaceful elections, 
we will definitely have peaceful results. And therefore, we will have a peaceful country from which we can develop and um, bring this country's name higher up in the map of the world. Already though small, and the fact that um, because of our size, nobody thought we would be able to um, continue with our independence when we sought for independence. In fact, this is one of the very few countries who gained independence without fighting. And if we were able to do that, I think we should be able to have our own elections without fighting, without violence, and continue the peace for which we are known. This code of conduct that is going to be signed is known as Towards Peaceful Presidential Elections in the Gambia, Code of Conduct for Candidates, November 21. I think we must have to remember the title, Code of Conduct for Candidates, because already we know there were codes of conduct for um, political parties. So this is different. Not that it is different in contents per se, but the emphasis is being put on the candidates and also the difference, the other difference is the fact that it was all that we have here was derived from the people themselves. The preamble reads, we the candidates to the December 4th, 2021 presidential elections in the Republic of the Gambia, having been duly certified by the Independent Electoral Commission, IEC, to contest the election, met at the Sir Dauda Kairaba Jaroga International Conference Center on this 11th day of November, 2021 at the instance of the Gambian populace, based on persistent demand to secure peaceful elections and the judicial resolution of electoral disputes. Expressing our appreciation to economic community of West African States, ECOWAS, African Union, AU, United Nations, UN, the government of the United Kingdom, the, U the government of the United Kingdom, the European Union (EU), and other partners, and to international IDEA for their support to this process, reaffirming our commitment to the tenets of the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia (1997), the Elections Act (2009). The Inter-Party Committee IPC Memorandum of Understanding and Code of Conduct 2017 and the IPC Peace Pledge, also known as the Janjambure Peace Accord 2021, being committed to taking all necessary and appropriate measures to consolidate our democracy and to preserve the Gambia's well-deserved reputation as a haven of peace, stability, and constitutionalism on the African continent, renewing our deep co commitments to peace in all our political activities before, during, and after the December 4th, 2021 presidential elections, we hereby declare as follows. One, to run issue-based political campaigns at village, town, city, district, constituency, municipal, regional, and national levels. Two, to publicly condemn violence, intimidation, and political thuggery at any time during the election process. Three, to refrain from and condemn the use of religious, sectarian, ethnic, and tribal politics to campaign. Four, to refrain from making or causing others to make in our names or in the name of our party 
any public statements, pronouncements, declarations, or speeches that have the potential to incite any form of ethnic, tribal, or religious sentiments, and which could impede access to eligible voters by political opponents. Five, to strongly condemn all acts of electoral violence, whether perpetuated by ourselves, our supporters, or our opponents. Six, to cooperate with the IEC and other political parties and candidates in ensuring orderly scheduling of political activities to avoid clashes of political processions, meetings, rallies, and other activities at the village, town, city, district, or constituency levels. Seven, to not engage in vote buying. Eight, to take all reasonable steps necessary to ensure the safety and protection of electoral officers from any form of threat, abuse, or violence, and to assist in the protection of election materials, including voters' register from willful damage, destruction, or theft. Nine to cooperate with IEC and law enforcement institutions, to act professionally and impartially in investigating electoral disputes, whether at the polling stations, community, constituency, religion, regional, sorry, and national levels. And to accept the results of elections as announced by the chairperson of IEC. 11, to restrain our supporters from resorting to violence in the aftermath of the elections. 12, to resort to judicial processes to address disputes which may arise from the elections. Eight, sorry, 13, to commit ourselves and parties and supporters to the monitoring of adherence to this code of conduct by a committee of eminent statesmen and women, traditional and religious leaders. 14, to take up the responsibility of communicating the tenets of this code of conduct to all our followers. This code of conduct is adopted at the Sardauda Kairawa Jawara International Conference Center, the Gambia, on 11th November 2021. It shall be signed by Honorable ANM Usainu Dabo, UDP, Honorable Mama Kande, GDC, Honorable Halifa Babakar Sala, PDOIS, H.E. Honorable Adam Abaro, NPP. Honorable S. Ambaifal, independent candidate. And Honorable Abdullahi Ibrahima, Jame, NUP. It shall be duly witnessed. By the President, Supreme Islamic Council, Chair Alaji S. Adabo by the chairman of the Gambia Christian Council, Bishop James Allen Yo Oriko, by the local facilitators, Honorable Mrs. Elizabeth F. Y. Renner, and Honorable Mr. Usman M. S. Yabo, and also witnessed by the eminent person who we have had praise throughout the day, not because we want just to make him look good,
but because he deserved those praises, His Excellency, Dr. Mohammed Ibn Chambers. I thank you all for listening, and I want to end by saying I'm deeply honored to have been selected to read this code of conduct because it is a history being made in the Gambia, number one, and because I'm a woman, if you look at the high table, there are only men there, I'm the only woman. So bravo for the women. We are always not on the side, not at the back, but in front of the men. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The only time that you've been on a table like this as a former speaker as well. So we, we really thank you for those remarks. Um, distinguished guests and viewers watching from abroad and in Gambia, I think it's clear that the Electoral Code of Conduct is just not a document that belongs to the IEC or political leaders here. It belongs to each and every one of us as Gambians because we are all part of the a piece of the electoral management process. We also are supposed to abide by these code of conduct because we recognize that this code of conduct is the instrument that sets the rules, the rules that are based on our laws. And these are the very rules that our presidential contestants or candidates will abide by. Thank you very much once again, Honorable Rena, for taking time to also give us a piece of your own thoughts about the importance of this code of conduct. At this juncture, I wish to now invite the presidential candidates, upon calling your names, of course, to head to the table where we will be signing this very document. I think the ladies will signal me once they're ready. Yes. So for those that are here to invite Honorable Usain Odabo to be the first to append his signature. Thank you very much, sir. Monica is signed right now, as you can see. Mom, no, no, Monica is signed. Six documents, Monica is signed. So six document in Kosai. Just to go to Pengu, I am new by a grade. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes, I'm very proud. My money for this and the one who did the part of my swap. I'm <laughs> 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 Thank you.
Yeah. He's signing this document. Uh, today, the two representatives will be also signing to complete the ceremony. So, I would now <laughs> like to invite you? Honorable Sikata to also um, represent His Excellency today. If you could kindly go towards the signing table. Thank you very much. Why? Who is the deputy party leader of the GDC, mainly also a uh, Kenya signature, sir, who will later also be signing this document? Yes, I'm by far in like this. Can you please have a Thank you very much, sir. Now, as you know, we've had five signatures already from us have a keen sense of independence, self-respect, and their oneness. I think today here, the presidential candidates have demonstrated that, and we really wish you all the best. Now, we would like to invite them each to give a three-minute statement. We know that this is normally very difficult for politicians, much more heads of political parties. But I, I know that it's been a long day and we have a campaign to do, so we really uh, would like to still hear from you. And so I would like to begin by inviting um, first Honorable Usainu Dawa from the UDP to please give us a speech on this day, marking the signing of the Code of Conduct for the candidates of the presidential election 2021. You're welcome, sir, to the podium. The host and hostess of this occasion. Uh, I heard Mrs. Fennel said that uh, she's the only woman on that table, and I congratulate you for that because it makes you easily noticeable among the men. I uh, stand on all existing protocols and to express our appreciation to international idea for coming out with this code of conduct, which from the preamble appears to me to be ad hoc, just applicable only to the December 4th presidential elections. And uh, I would have thought that course of conduct of this nature to go beyond addressing particular situation. Now that the chairman of the Interparty Committee is here, as well as maybe the IEC chairperson, efforts will be made to have this code of conduct as subsidiary legislation under the Elections Act so that it becomes a permanent future of our electoral matters transparently, and that contesting candidates must not resort to anything other than what is recognized by the law. After all, it appears to me that this code of conduct that we have signed today uh, is a reflection of some of the provisions in our elections act. And all that we really, since we really need to do is implementation. And uh, we committing ourselves to sign it not because of the cameras, because we believe in it. And I want to assure everyone here that the United Democratic Party and me in particular, the candidate, 
will adhere to this code of conduct. UDP stands for unification of this country. UDP fights polarization. UDP fights tribalism. UDP fights anything divisive in this country. We want to be, we want to provide bridges between the various ethnic groups and bridges between the various regions in this country. Our commitment to this nation is reflected in our struggle for the past 22 years. I would have thought that those political parties that signed this agreement today or this code of conduct today would never have been called upon to do so because of our past. That we just have developed the tradition of conducting elections in the way that is thought to be the practice. I think we should now be developing traditions rather than codifying everything. I do not believe, I have not seen any code directing the conduct of elections in the First Republic. I have not said, I have not seen it. Yet they are contending parties. I mean, the issues are not different from now. Are they more patriotic than we are? I don't think they are. So we should really believe in what our constitution says. We should really believe in what we are saying. And this solemn occasion should not really be used just as a mere window dressing. It must be something that it reflects our beliefs. It must be something that we are prepared to live by. And I want to assure everyone here, particularly my friend and brother, Mr. Bun Chambers, that Hussein Rudabo, the presidential candidate for the United Democratic Party, will do everything in his power to ensure that this code is respected. I have signed in good faith, and the faith that made me sign this I will live by that state. We want to assure everyone that we want to unite this country. I want to assure everyone that peace is what we will advocate for. That is why we have it in our motto, justice, peace, and progress. We believe that without justice, you cannot have peace. And we believe that without peace, you cannot embark on any development of the nation. And justice, of course, can only be given by those who have been vested with power to do things on behalf of the nation. If you treat me differently from another party, and I feel that I have been met with injustice, it could really push me into doing something that will call be the cause of instability. And I want to appeal to everyone of us, we the candidates and the general citizenry, the below abiding that we should make the world know that Gambia is the smiling coast. And you cannot have a smiling coast if there's no peace, if there's violence. We want to ensure that during and after the elections, there, are no, there is no violence. But also want to appeal to the authorities, particularly law enforcement authorities, that they should be impartial. That way, they can ensure peace. That way, they can, the people will really respect the laws of the country. But if preferential treatments are given to a group of people, and my people are not given the same treatment, that does not that will not go well for stability in this country. We are not warning, but we are only advising. And I want to congratulate all of you who have worked hard to realize this document, and I also want to take the opportunity to publicly congratulate my fellow contestants. I have always believed that we are not rivals. We are just competitors. We all want to do the best for our country. And in doing so, there is no need, there is no room for acrimony. There is no room for hostility. We must all be, we must all be friends and consider ourselves first and foremost as Gambians before being a United Democratic Party leader or being for the country of the United Democratic Party. I thank you all.
Good afternoon, dignitaries, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen here present today. Before I commence, allow me to first of all uh, thank the moderators of this event and also the organizers for giving us this important opportunity today. Today marks a very important day in the history of the democracy of this country. As I know it, for the first time, candidates are publicly pledging to observe a particular code of decorum in our elections. Of course, the history of the past as a young diplomat, I have worked in situations in which we tried to put together rules in order to avert potential post-election violence. I recall also working as a lawyer in a peacekeeping operation in which that country was badly affected by post-election violence. And I saw firsthand what that could mean for any developing country. In both 1999 and the year 2000, I worked on the East Timor file, first at the UN Security Council, wherein we wrote resolutions addressing that problem. Later, I worked there to help re-establish the justice sector in that country, which was badly affected by the post-election violence arising out of the 1999 referendum. And later in life, I worked at the International Criminal Court as a lawyer defending both the uh, Kenyan leaders, the Kenyatta case and the William Ruto case, which arose as a result of terrible post-election violence in which 1,256 Kenyans were killed and also property worth millions and millions of dollars were lost. And I believe that all that was absolutely unnecessary. It was an attack on the democracy of the people and an absolute waste. And uh, that is one of the reasons why when I declared to be candidate in this election, I thought that it was absolutely necessary that the people who work with me are made to embrace particular values that would impact positively on our election. That's why we came up with our own code of conduct that we made all our campaign staff to accept. We also tried to promote it amongst our supporters. Everywhere we went, we advised them that we comply by a particular code of conduct. Thankfully, that code of conduct mirrors what is contained in the code of conduct we have just signed today. So, this signing ceremony just strengthens or recognizes the values that we have in Team SR by Fall for President. And we intend to keep our word. We intend to abide by it because we believe that it reinforces our democracy, it strengthens the bonds and the unity of the Gambian people. When I see the other candidates in this race, I don't see enemies. When I see Honorable Usaino Dabo, I see an uncle and a senior in my trade. When I see Honorable Salah, I see an uncle and an, an eminent Gambian 
we all revert when we were growing up. When I see President Barrow, and when I see Mr. Jame, and when I see Mr. Kande, I see brothers. I wish there were women also in the race, and rest assured that I would have seen sisters out of them. And that is the way it should be. Uh, we must respect one another and treat each other properly, properly, even though we are competing for a position. And uh, I do believe that it is quite in keeping with Gambian values that we treat one another with respect and dignity that every single one of us deserves. And I stand before you and uh, reaffirm that pledge, the signature that I just made, that Team SM by far would do everything to comply with the commitment we have just made. Uh, before I leave, I want to emphasize one important issue. Uh, all this would be a hollow gesture if there is no monitoring of the activities of those concerned with a view to holding us accountable for what we have just signed up to. Uh, it is one thing to sign up to lofty ideals if there is no effort to hold us accountable to those ideas. It would just be a follow gesture. Uh, I do believe and I do hope that uh, efforts would be made uh, to monitor what the parties do, the parties and the candidates and their supporters do, in order to ensure that we live up to our commitment. Uh, once that is done, I think the prospect of being caught wanting uh, could perhaps maybe help calibrate our behaviors to ensure that we are uh, uh, what we have on the table. Uh, on that note, I wish all my fellow candidates uh, good luck in this election and uh, look forward to a fair competition and a fair arbiter who would deliver on the expectations and aspirations of the Gambian people, which is peaceful elections, fair elections, and a process that is above board. Thank you very much. I appreciate the pledge that you have shared here today. Uh, the call for accountability and moreover mindfulness. Thank you very much. Just uh, before I call on uh, Honorable Abdullahi Jame from NUP, I would just like to do a little bit of housekeeping. I'm sure all of you have received in your bag this wonderful document by the Interparty Committee. We'd just like to clarify that this six, uh, the six presidential candidates today have not been signing the code of conduct of this uh, document, but rather there is a separate code of conduct document that is being si signed today and will be circulated later. Um, secondly, I would like to share information that Honorable Halifa Salah has already signed the document um, today um, and he does um, share his regrets for not joining his colleagues here, the five presidential candidates. He would like to express that he had another event and function that took a whole lot of time and as a result he was unable to go and dress for the occasion and um, it's quite an occasion to dress up for so uh, please he is um, extending his regards to each and every one of you especially um, to um, his excellency here um, um, Chambers, yes, um, he sends his warm regards to you and uh, thanks you uh, for all the efforts and also um, to IDEA and uh, all those organizing Ministry of Justice and Interparty Committee. Okay, 
So moving ahead, we would like to invite now Honorable Abdullah Jalmer from NUP to please share with us your sentiments on this occasion. I'd like to stand on the established protocols. Uh, the most unfortunate thing that can befall any politician is to have veteran politicians, especially when they are lawyers, speaking before you on the same subject. <laughs> they leave you with nothing to say. <laughs> and I think that will help me a lot because I'll pass the exam. The moderators did say that we have only three minutes to talk. So you realize that I'll say what I have to say and still leave you with a few minutes. Thank you very much. I want to say that we as a party, that's the National Unity Party, our subscription to this code of conduct is total. In fact, it's a reflection of a code that we have adopted internally as a party. If anyone is a visitor to our platform, our media platform, to realize that these are the events uh, that we advocate. So I say thank you very much and that we're very happy uh, to have appended our signature as a party to this agreement. I did remark to Honorable Chambers and team yesterday as a prelude to this function that I believe this is the real peacekeeping. What we say peacekeeping is when we station military garrisons in foreign countries. That for me is crisis resolution. Peacekeeping is when you put together arrangements that can prevent crises. And I think this is exactly what we have achieved here today. I also want to say that I think there is a feature level for this process. Someone mentioned it here. I think it's one of the candidates, uh, possibly Honorable Sinodavo or SM by far, that we need another level, and that level is enforceability. We need what we call enforcement action. The provision signs, but for example, a provision that prohibits vote buying, I don't know how we police that. But that in itself is a threat for democracy. And that is something that we need to look at. But having said that, and pledge to talk for less than three minutes, I want to say thank you very much. We are very happy to be part of this process. Thank you all. Thank you. Yes, I will have to. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I stand on all existing protocols as uh, we have limited time. But before I comment my deliberate my statement, on behalf of His Excellency the President of the Republic, I just have a few words to mention about this memorial event and a one of a kind in the history of the Gambia. In general, we're not here to lecture. But to reaffirm that a code of conduct is never against existing laws of the land. Rather, it complements the existing laws and are normally of a higher standard than the existing laws. As such, compliance there would create a situation where there will be no need to resort to the laws. In my profession of investment management, the mantra is always to uphold the higher of either the existing code of ethics or the laws of the land, whichever is higher. So today, the burden of proof on candidates for the election is a higher one than the existing mm -hmm. laws. And we hope and pray that that is observed. And I subscribe to that. Mm -hmm. And prior to coming to this meeting, the brief I have from my principal, His Excellency, the President of the Republic, Adam Abaro, is that he fully subscribes and, live, and we'll live by it. So with that, we begin our deliberation and basically it's saying that 
this signing ceremony indeed, as I've been mentioned, is the first of its kind that the nominated and approved candidates are com coming together to sign a code of ethics or code of conduct, which by committing themselves to a peaceful election, refrain from violence and intimidation, as well as to accept the declared results of the IEC. That is a very fundamental part thereof. You will recall, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that this dialogue process for the conduct of a peaceful election was initiated by the government of the Gambia through the Ministry of Justice, working in collaboration with IDEA on the 12th of September 2021, when the process commenced. The overarching objective is to build a political consensus among the political parties, leaders, civil service organizations, the media, IEC, security forces, traditional rulers, faith-based organizations, on the need for a peaceful electoral campaign, peaceful voting, and peaceful electoral dispute resolution, if any, for the 2021 presidential election and the 2022 legislative election. So the conduct is not just for presidential, but for the legislative elections as well. Having signed this document today, which among other things, our commitment to consolidate the nation democracy and preserve the Gambia's renowned reputation for peace, peaceful existence, and stability, I can assure you, on behalf of His Excellency, the President of the Republic, and the leader of the NPP, that we will abide and fully comply with the letter and spirit of the Code of Conduct here in Appendix 2. I would like, on behalf of His Excellency, who is unable to be with us this afternoon, to congratulate the nominated members and approved members by the IEC for the presidential election and to wish you all a very successful and peaceful campaign. In the same vein, I would like to seize this opportunity to thank all political parties, their leaders that participated in this dialogue. This dialogue, as you are all aware, by now was facilitated by His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Ibn Chambers, former United Nations Secretary General, uh, Secretary, Rep Secretary Special Representative for West Africa and Sahel. I wish you were one. <laughs> and assisted by two prominent Gambians, Honorable Elizabeth Renner and Usman Yabo. But it's never late, sir. <laughs> I would like to extend my profound thanks and gratitude to Dr. Chambers in the first place for accepting to lead this dialogue. And it is indeed a honor that we have such a strong, prominent personality to conduct the dialogue. His legacy to the transition justice for the Gambia will ever be cherished. And once again, Dr. Thank you. To the two prominent Gambians who have accompanied him on the journey, we also wish to extend His Excellency's deepest and heartfelt commendation. Above all, your participation is a noble task and is a testament to your patriotism and commitment to duty and country. Finally, this series of dialogues were sponsored by IDEA and international organization that has been with us in the Gambia since the beginning of the transition. And we'll recall that the mediation that was conducted last year on the consultation on the constitution was also under their auspices, as well as which was led by former president Goodluck Jonathan of Nigeria. This is an organization that has left footprints on all components of our transitional justice process. And it's therefore fitting that I express on behalf of the government of the Gambia and the people our deepest gratitude and appreciation for everything that they have done. In the same vein, we will also like our international partners for accompanying us on this journey and to help us build the Gambia we all want. At the end of the day, that's the most important thing, the Gambia we Gambians want. With that, we thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Kato, for that fantastic speech. Um, please extend to His Excellency that we have heard his message very well and that uh, we have heard his commitment to peace. And we do thank uh, him for exercising tolerance and showing tolerance during his tenure. Um, now I would like to finally call upon um, Mr. Amaduka from GDC who is ably representing here, Honorable Mama Kande, who is 
out of country on his way, uh, but um, would like to send his warm regards to his colleagues on this day and also equally congratulating them. Honorable Kat. Um, thank you. Um, warmest greetings to everyone here present, uh, members of the high table, uh, members of the diplomatic and consular corps, and the inter-party committee through their co-chair, um, Honorable Musa Amunyasi, um, member of my own team that I come here with. Um, on behalf of the Gambia Democratic Congress and the party leader of the Gambia Democratic Congress, um, Honorable Mama Kande, uh, who sent his warmest greetings and apologies that uh, for the fact that he's not in the country, he was not able to be here by himself. But um, first of everything, uh, he commits himself, the entire leadership of the GDC, but also um, have all of our supporters well wishes that this code of conduct is something of prime importance. And then that being the case, the GDC through him and himself um, promise to totally commit to this code of conduct um, before, during and after the elections. And would at all times reflect to what actually has been endorsed in the Code of Conduct to be an important tool and a guiding process throughout the process. Um, we can just remember a um, few years ago, we almost had been visited by the absence of peace. And that guest isn't a guest that is happily remembered by all of us. And that being the case, I believe it was a test and a good lesson to most of us who had not experienced the absence of peace. I will not even call it absence of peace, but almost the absence of peace. Um, our country being a very peaceful country, most of us, since our birth to date, have an experience when I've been hurt in other countries. But at least that single, that window gave us a better idea what it means when we are to be in a country where we cannot enjoy peace and tranquility. So therefore, collectively, it is important that we remind ourselves of the very importance of living together, but also going through our national duties peacefully. Democracy, peaceful elections, all requires a collective work, collective responsibility. Here we are today as leaders and candidates contesting for the 2021 presidential elections who bear the greater responsibility for this code that we're talking about. But every single soul in this country, being a citizen of the country or a guest in the country, have a role to play in the preservation of our peace and then also in the observance of a peaceful election. So we all must endure to go through this process collectively where we all together preach for peace, pray for peace, and advise one another in the cause of peace. It is also important, we know that everybody in this country, every citizen and every guest in this country have absolute right to live in this country peacefully, to enjoy the peace that has, we have been known as a country. So therefore, the rights of individual people in this country need to be protected. And I would call on every Gambian, but most especially the contestant of this election, to bear the greater part of such a responsibility. 
we all have the right to go out and do our canvas in our campaign. We will be visited by the trauma of victory, of supporters who want to see us victorious at the end of the day. But we always must bear in mind that the peace of this country and a greater part of the peace in this process we are going into lies on ourselves. It is important also to remind our people also in the aspect of ethical politics. The issue of hate speech, the issue of naming and saving one another in the streets shouldn't be the way as it is already enshrined in this code that the campaign and our messaging could be about issues and not as I just mentioned. But again, a greater responsibility of that lies in the heads of the individual contestants and the respective executives of their political parties and or independent, uh, their personal teams. And this we all must, and must try as much as possible to, to, to protect and to see it happen. We are challenged by a lot of situations. We have seen recently the use of money and of order, but may not call whatever, I may not even call a strategy or so, but what I'm just trying to put across is not the way forward. We have been handed over country by people or by centuries, you know, by our forefathers. And one of the most fundamental aspects that they are handed over to us was peace. We must start thinking about what we would like to hand over to the generations yet unborn. So on that note, I would sincerely congratulate and also wish the very best of luck to the contestants, all of them. And then I'll just reiterate the necessity for us all to go through this election in a peaceful and most appropriate manner. All other stakeholders must also acknowledge that they are key players in this peace process, including the security services, the independent electoral commission, and even the CSOs and media as, as, uh, personalities and media groups, that this peace would be preserved not only by the candidates themselves, but collectively by all of us. Each and every one of us at any point in time, is could be a recipe for the absence of peace. And therefore then, you may not be signing today, but I urge you to take the greater responsibility for this code of conduct to see us all sail through this election in a peaceful and the best way possible. I thank you all. I'm sorry for taking much of your time as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Kapp. Gambia, we need to be mindful of the young people. His voice, is, he has a lot of wisdom and he has a lot of black hair. So we, we, do, we do think that our gray hair elders have done a good job in Gambia in really uh, preparing us and the likes of Mr. Ka demonstrate that. So we do thank you for your, your, your speech. I'd like to hand over now to um, John Charles Nyai. And thank you, the three minutes. But I think we must uh, give a round of applause again to our politicians uh, for all that they do. Well, after the signing and after hearing the commitments from uh, those that have signed and those that are representing, it's now time for uh, the witnesses uh, to sign uh, the documents. I think to ease, can you bring it to them? I think that would be easier. So you can just pass it so that they would all sign uh, the document. And uh, we did not ask you to fasten your seatbelts because we trusted that the journey was going to be smooth sail. Um, and I'm sure you are all... Your Excellencies, um, I also want to take a cue from those who spoke before me. 
things that I stand uh, with the protocols which have been established. Uh, I want to just make a few remarks, just short ones, that today is a historic day, very historic day in the history of the Gambia, really where we get the presidential candidates in with all humility and perseverance and patience when at the heat of the campaign of the few days that you are being given are to be with us. And I think that is a show of leadership and I want us to really uh, appreciate them uh, for that. Um, what is really important in Africa, if you look at the peacekeeping missions across the world, majority of them are in Africa. And they're in Africa because of either absence of peace, uh, collapse of states, or complex conflicts which trigger that the UN to intervene. And we always say that comes about because of lack of peace or deficit of governance. That's why globally a lot of money is spent in Africa to keep peace. And often the trigger is around elections and constitutional changes of government, uh, whose extensions of time limits and all that. In the next two weeks, International IDEA will be launching a report which is called the Global State of Democracy Report. And in that, you will see that there are some regions are making quite some progress, some regions are not making progress. We are seeing the return of coups. In our region here, we have challenges in Mali, in Chad, in Sudan, Ethiopia, which hosts us now, is really undergoing quite some challenges. Guinea, recently. And of course, we don't want that to be that what will come to the smiling coast of Africa, isn't it? So we want the smiling coast of Africa with the assurances that we have been given by His Excellency the President when we met him, as well as by all the presidential candidates here today. And I think we hope that all will go well. Today, the Code of Conduct has been signed, building on the foundation set by other codes of conduct uh, that have been signed through the IPC and other political parties. These are all efforts. And this is what the Gambian people should really appreciate. They are all efforts to show that from the UN level, development partners level, AU, ECOWAS, and everyone else, that the world is watching the Gambia. And we want Gambia to really cross this bridge in a peaceful manner. And the code of conduct will be, I think a number of the presidential candidates have said, we want it to be monitored. There's a US scholar who said that peace is not a piece of paper. So this code of conduct will not be a piece of paper. We have the National Election Response Group. We have a lot of eyes from different observers. And we have been told by the chairman of ISD that the number of observers who are asking for accreditation is really much, uh, much, uh, quite massive. Quite massive. That shows the level of interest. And uh, I want to also say that we will support as international idea together with our other partners to ensure that this code of conduct, particularly the signature page, is going to be popularized in the media and also translated to different languages. And I want to call upon the groups to really help us with that. So finally, I think I will just quote really saying that after the election, it's also when the hard work begins. I'm a Kenyan. Kenya has uh, different strides. So sometimes we go to the edge and then we find a way of coming back. You know, we have political violence, which uh, His Excellency Honorable uh, Fall spoke about as a representative of some of the clients we shipped off to The Hague, uh, where he's also representing them. But then you also learn the politics of compromise, the politics of handshake. I want to encourage our presidential candidates that they remain committed to peace, they remain committed to resolutions of any dispute through peaceful means or judicial means. And also, 
learn from countries from Kenya, but on the good side of it. The politics of handshake, which can also be very useful sometimes. Um, uh, Your Excellencies, let me now really want to, I want to really thank uh, our presidential candidates for finding time out of very busy campaign schedule to be with us. And maybe the next election, beyond just signing the Code of Conduct, we should be able to gather with the Gambian people, civil society, and other partners, organize even presidential debates. Presidential debates. That would be very interesting. It's been done in some other African countries. That beyond the three minutes, we can give you 30 minutes in future, inshallah. And I want to also hope that as Madam Reina said, she shouldn't be alone on the side of the conveners, but have actually more presidential candidates also on the other side. And I'm sure it can be done. And I know the Gambian women are extremely strong. Uh, Your Excellencies, I want to really thank um, the Almighty God for giving us this opportunity uh, to be here and for having these excellent conversations without any tempers rising, without any of uh, strong supporters uh, cheering or doing any other thing. And also, I want to thank His Excellency the President for actually according His Excellency Chambers and the team uh, an excellent hearing and also really uh, giving His blessings for this support and also his deploying his ministers who are with us, including also the Minister of Justice, who has really been working very closely with us and the Solicitor Generals in the crowd here. And I want to also thank our chair, I would say chair, you know, we have a lot of titles, the eminent person, uh, Dr. Chambers, who has really, really worked for Africa and also worked for the world at different levels and for really standing with the Gambian people and for his wisdom and for his humility and for his wealth of experience, which is also very well supported by the deep, deep experience of Honorable Reina and also Honorable Yabo. I want to thank our religious leaders, the chairman of the Christian Council and the president of the Supreme Council, Islamic Council, for their prayers, as well as really supporting this process. And by that, they are getting their constituencies also really to ensure that we walk the path of peace. I want to thank also the uh, Interparty uh, Committee. And of course, we have six presidential candidates, but there are also other candidates who really wanted to become candidates, but they also have really a huge constituency. We want you to also continue to break peace to others and also want to thank the officials and the chairman who is within the crowd here. Importantly, the chairman of IEC, Together with the team, yes, sir, you are the referee. And we want to pray for you. Continue to exercise independence, wisdom, and ensuring that we have a credible election of whatever that is within your control. And um, as well, really, the civil society, the faith based groups, and also media um, to continue to be vigilant uh, in the same process. Importantly, the national election response group. We also have a huge task to continue to monitor issues of hate crimes, hate speech, incitements, and I think that mechanism can continue to grow and also ensure that we have a peaceful uh, election. I want to thank our diplomatic community who have been extremely patient. I want to thank the development partners. I want to thank the UN, the EU, the UK, particularly really for the support that they have accorded for this uh, support to international idea. And we want to continue to com encourage collaboration among all the partners that we are able to really stand in a more coordinated manner uh, with the Gambian people to pull off uh, an, an excellent election. Representatives of the AU, ECOWAS, uh, African Union, of course, and also the UN who are present, and the, uh, the moderators, I think, actually did an excellent job, isn't it? Can we have a round of applause for them? Because they are the only ones who have been extremely attentive from the beginning, isn't it? They have been very attentive and we want to really thank you uh, for, for this support and for your eloquence as well. I want to thank my colleagues in International Idea, Maurice and the team, a number of them spread all over. We also have a number of people within the Ministry of Justice who have been working closely with us. We want to really thank you.
I know these are people who sleep sometimes at 2 a.m. at 3 a.m. and ensure that every comma is corrected. You know, we have an English teacher here, as I'm in the name of uh, Nora Morina, who was also very particular how things are spelled and also commas are uh, applied. Uh, I want to really thank as well the government uh, of the Gambia for all the protocol assistance, security assistance that they have given us and ensuring that everything is going well and the management of this important beautiful center for ensuring that we have all the COVID compliance done and also the excellent uh, facilitation as well and finally really to thank everyone here everyone in this room for their commitment uh, to this as international idea the message from my secretary general all the way from stockholm that we will continue to work with the Gambia after election because there are a few things that needs to be made or tightened and we want to be there. It's your process, it's your aspiration, but we want to support you in what will make the Gambia to continue to be the smiling coast of Africa. Thank you very much and may God bless us all and may God bless uh, the Gambia as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, please uh, just remain uh, seated a bit. Uh, the launch is launch will be served immediately. But before the launch, we will take the first photo at the entrance at the stairs.
Ah, Uh, bon Uh, Mangue Bon mari, nous la jaja fal bu ba haba di la welcome fi ci kem ci secretariat di contact ci satya way fi ah mitin bi nak comme ni mako waxe du mona yaga ndax dej bi ba pare tam ah xam nañ ne lay mu ngi off tam so ni nga xam ne non lay def rek moy ma o ki nga xam ne mo nek regional chairman falam sonko dan su boba mu dalal gan yi dan ñu duga ci li nga xamne mo mo neka mitin bi chairman ya subhanallah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin yo wane halu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun ndax wax de gaad neex yalla te lu ñu fi dajé ñun ñep xam nañ ko si time politique lañ nek way demba rek dañ am wañeku bu reey am ko xamne suñu dëkk suñu liggéey ndor na e mu nekkon ku takku si parti bi demba mu ngi ando na parti bi li la rek op wano ko lok ci suba mom mo geena adina tay lolu du tis bu reey ci ñun a mo tax tay parti li da suspend limo def yeb way nak tay fi mo mënu fe ñaaka tew ndax ku melni ajaratu mari sok su ñëwé boka ci ñun lolu dafa nek lu reey pour démocratie dafa nek lu reey pour gambia et lolou rek tax tay ndaje bi am way nak ñun ñep gis nañ ñu fi nekké ku xam UDP xamné politique bi du ñoo bayyi dara su nekku ton dëgg bi ni ko non li ngay na fekk fi dina sédda xol way nak dëgg bi tax ñu né nañ ko défé ni et bon nak mari ñu ngi la wax né jëré jëp jaarama sa kër jaarama UDP war bi yaatu na ñu ñep ko boka way li lañ séntu won ci yow ndax wax de gané yalla so gisé ñun ñuy oppose dañu oppose pour def gambia fo xamné suñ doomi ak suñ sét yi dañ mu gëna fuga sen dëna di titaro gambia comme américain bi ñu mo titaro né mom awa américain la lool lañ bëgga gambia bi tam di titaro né man américain la té mari bëgga na bokka ci history bobu té su sobé yalla ndortu na né dina bokka ci history bobu waye nak dafa nekk ci suñ aada ganna ajaratu mari sok jigen la té suma second député jigen la moy ajaratu badjen bo nak dama ko bëgga jox teranga bi pour momo bismillah bismillah ñu mari sok badjen teranga ba ma ya ko assalamu alaykum ma ngi nuyu suñ gan yi de li lay wax ne jëre ngi jëf de bismillah ma rek ma bi sok jobaté Ah, alhamdulillah yaay la gis na ni gis na li yaay gis na ni gis na li jigey ñi fess motax bu ñoo bokal ci ci united democratic party li nuyu suma president ci ñu wéddi taw seenu taw seenu salam aleykum ma ngi nuyu mané sop ñi nga andal ñepp di lay wax ni jëre ngi jëf yéna ci jappa wala ci jappu ko xeb na xeñ na ko ex ci fi 
Aja yang mana jeringi jeff kuantan yang sen tewai. Yang dia nak kita nampi supply si 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 region B. Dia nak kita supply si UDP. Dia wana UDP UDP jeff lah. Amut sos, amut bol, amut jola, amut kolok. Man kolok lah. Paling mungkin wah dia kita kolok sos ya lah. So yang dia kita nolong nolong UDP terus. Amu jigen tapi jeda bias amu fi jeda pelan sape am. Si jigen fukur jape fi le jigen jape fi. Si jigen jape fi le fukur jape fi. So yang la. Mana mana so dia le jeff si le ngaju UDP. Dia le jeff si le ngaju yuan yuan binga wala kis am le gambia dapat sana. Iti kis lo akan pun UDP yang le giri gambia. Yang la ni dia jeff yang le right direction bi. Yang le alam tu darat kalbi. Yang le itu beri aga view si nu dah. Yang jeff ni buat apa? Jadi Jeff Chairman, jika dulu refuture nonulen, film ni kan ikut lima def moyo, awak kira kami, mana kaboto Omar Mane, mungkin anda kira kami moy presidential aspirant Marisox. Nekafi top ni juga di kira kami moneta chairman bon boto mula doktor kadu. Aujo bilahi mina seitan erajim, aujo bilahi mina seitan erajim, bismillahi rahman rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين. أوكي. ب. مفروض من كنتنا ولا منا أجر تودي من كذا أجر مرسوم جوابتي مع كنتنا فاك. نيو نيو بوتاجي. ب. بانغو بلا ألفا مع كنتنا ككومو سيان سيان ديدرون من كذا مبيفا ماتي. Ala haji usiani da. Niwa bota jamba la executive be kontona mimi yalongo ibe loring ala kuwa la suto tilo be be kontona be tento la be gai. Nje mo dingo binti before maribina nje mo dingo binti kapati yomi supporti nuno wale mo APRC bari kabiri marinata. Nala siloje akatanya meng anala fita mina Gambia na jengole kumaya tanfe katambi APRC. Wale ati nambota ji nata mai. Kabiri nata jefana ale yake because among the money sonno bari na kachata na kachata na jeko ari partiyo lbe nka yako ini ibeshe kacha na jube pati jamale mu Nini mto la karansi lota tadi njiki tami yalongo ase Gambia bundi dingo kwa kabiri ngai partiyo be kisi kisi be ngai kisi kisi ngai jibe ngai jeko kwa wamu uludi pi so wale ati na mbulata anuma kwa chojo stale fang because lafta nuni na nuni fang mto la area fang lafta nuni kamoto tan samba na kanaja bari bi kuli bali beya mamu sone kwa wamu ya jibe mol mili be na takiende. So lafda min kuma danda ne fula le dro be kafunyoma so ne ya kono bu nya kono because nkana kamfa ku nyini nabu ka kamfa ni ya jam ba fula ndeba ta APR sila bar APR sin ko lu bi janne adu lafta janne ba fula lokum mo tanim fenge samanan ye kafu adu be o keno la le alondo benna le aspiranci benna adu nga hadama ya benna le fula adu be o keno la ni be kacha kan Lafta mudol manda nu UDP bari bina jeli ming alasan. Bari konsona bari tenjula bari ala barakaba. Jere 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 si kadu yere fadu inunlen. Brajo mo nakinga hamne mo ne kamari. Buga na o kinga hamne mo honorable amuru skadrajane. Anda aka kinga hamne mo president inweji. Subo ba mokta musani kadu. Abelanya atau kena hamne mui mari honorable.
Assalamu alaikum. Mbal kontona. Benda lunta mba kontona aninga na anyol be. Mbemfango la pati nyato nko. Alhaji usenu dabo mba kontona. Aninga na anyolu jang. Executive voto animo kotengol be. Nyingketa ntoli ye kontan baleti. Katung. Mwomi ye bankola nyato taje. Bankola nafaje. Wodorone binala. Aya abulo kafu ntol kang. Abulo kafu alhaji usenu dabo kang. Kul kafalingo na ati nyimba mko kang. Marisok, ajaratu Marisok Jobate. Nga ajela ala politiko aya tamandija nyami. Nga ajela fana alafta bankola nyato tala. Wale atina aya kata aya la mol na ati ke kafu nkang. A kafu en kontan le katu nga aluna kumkili nga manna ay koma le soto. Duwamu kule te mi. Mi yalong abe banko bele na fal. UDP. UDP mupatile te mi yalong. Jani be duna jele ka ke lunta ngot. Bari niye singo dung je fa banta. Ini mo bele ka kanyan je. Nse atani nte fangola. Na joino UDP. Aman tambi sanji fulola. Dung. Man ni misa. Ka tu nte fana lapta na patio le kela. Bari biri ngaje UDP be lori minkang. Ila nyato nko be lori minkang. Ay kato minke bankoe. Ay hamo min soto bankoe. Nko, mi mumbele na fati wala mga tara kom. Ndumbe pati dole fana nyato nko lu. Minu ya lonko eman kafukang folo. Puru ise bankoje. Ise aja marisob jobate nokang. Ibe na nga bunda yele kafukang. Kwa ya kwa nyami nilapta nunyimbengwa itambi nina Mwesi ya jankendeke Bari nga sangole soto Mbali tentula mbali jahila Mbali kola welcome Mbe kanyanta jele almanke lunta Ntikoteke ala baraka Jere jambu mwe mwe Chinkandu yu refetu yu Kinga hapu ya mwame nyoho Mwane ka Mwudu shawu Mwe chairman binga hamne mone ka chairman ni Mari Jenu Kunda chairman Mwamla nyoho Musani Aika Durek Bala nyoho Mari Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum alaikum Les chers Les contents Si vous êtes ici Et si vous êtes ici Contents à tous Je vous dis que je suis le président Aja Abmari Sok Jowade Alayi Bordo Mari Et si vous êtes ici Semua bapa, semua ni jai, semua mam, ala juga saya nak tahu. Kuda nak cerap, si visit TV, bawa mari jele, ani mau fumu buka, asal tak parti bi, buka nak cerap, ayam.
Nilaftaka kodo mutaka bonang UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and nyim banku to malmu meto. Supersonic slate dulade. Anada di masanji jama gambia banko kam se kodo ta no le ibedda Assalamualaikum <laughs> Yo, na na excellency, intel na labe do bola, molo mu meya lango, island di daoda na ba kela le, na ko nga dum bungo na, na be dum bungo na ko nga sel santo, na be sel la santo le, musolo mu meya lango ke musolo mu, aku o beno moli, aku o no gameno be. And I am going to defend no man. I go to the silo to Moyalongo, Gamedin Kendo in the Bula Wallenova. So, Bartendula Bartendula Bajaila, I cut a poor menke, I do poor menke, and I am with a poor menke mola. Alla Dorana Bajola, Mala Sima Bala, Alla Kenda, Alla Mancunima, Alma Alacana Fundi Jola, Alma Alcanda was holding. I don't have a party member and I'm going to be a farmer. 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 i Excellency <laughs> Alma Aleaso, Jada Kendala, Alamir Fugu Diala, Bega Membay, the Kabo, Bega Membay, Alma Ada Besoni, Aslava de Munamatina. I Excellency, 
ma paré di jajeufal suma nit ñi nga xamné tay ñu and ak man ñi nga xamné from gunjur be jenen kunda be to bokko to ñep ñew nañ ah suñu sañon tay bu fekké né du won demba bi tay dikon gën gis ñu bari ñu fi wacca tay way time bi mo gatta parce que ñun tamit dañ ñoo pour won lek suñu doole eh di len nuyu nak yeen ñep di contenté torop ci welcome bi welcome bi machallah di len wane nak ñun ci marie sok asd alliance of social democrats dañ ñew fi pour liggey ak udp dolel udp lo len manke di nañ ko doli lo len lo len lo len ko bolé tamit bu ñu ñu len ko wañel so legi dañ ñu pour work together hand in hand ñu mëna liggey dëkk bi surtout pour ñun jigen yi ak ndaw yi man ci lool la taxaw té ci lool la yëngu té fok na né lool rek fok na né lool rek a gambia day jigen yaaf ko té ndaw yaaf ko ko té buñ dolel jigen ni né bo dolé lé jigen dal dolel nga rew bo dolé jigen dolel nga dëkk yépp ci adina bi so ci lool lañu taxaw ci lool lañu yëngu di len wax nak jere jëf suma orof bi nak satut nonu way di len wax ne inshallah UDP Alhaji Husainu Dabo 4 Desember 2021 ñun tigeni gambia yi ñun doomi gambia yi ñun alalinda gambia ni ñoko bot ya ku gana ngeen top takalen sen ligay jigen yi takalen sen ligay parce que programme sign am ci bir UDP motax ñun ñu ñew bot UDP tay te programme si yoy buñ ko implementer jigen du fi sonati te programme si yoy buñ ko implementer suñ doom yi duñ sonati parce que fum nek ni di nga dem ba magget sa dom di la topato wala yow ngay topato sa dom fek ko sonanga ala yi amuñ liggey ñu nge ñu nge ñu nge nek ci drop nek ci lu bari way buñ dolele yaay am man ne dom ni di nañ di nañ len dolel te buñ dolele ndaw yi nga xamne ega nañ ci at yo xamne mut nañu liggey yit ah bon wajur yi mu na nopale ko fum nek ni kenn rita yawu da nga dem ba magget di liggey Gambia bi ma xam de te Gambia bobu la Alhaji Husseinu bi may xam parce que ñun ñepp a joggé ci bena generation since uh, time yi jawara bi legi ex bobu lañu xex pour indi wat Gambia ni melon Gambia bi ñu xamone ni dafa amone jamm Gambia bi ñu xamone jigen yu sonuñ won ni ndaw yi amone nañ hope way fum nek ni kenn amatut hope ndaw yang ci lo xamne machallah a buruton eh eh kilifa yi nek ci rew mi ndikon fum nek ni ñu ngay wax leneen ci bir dekk bi way comme que am nañ diiné am nañ ay kilifa ñu nek di eda di jappalé ndaw yi motax ndaw yi ba tay nek di deglu wahi mak way bu doon benen degal ndikon xalé yi yaxu nañ parce que dara nekku ci pour ñom hop rek fi nek so nañ len taxaw ñu bambu alaji usaynu dabo mu muna tok rek le mbir bi del lo ko ndaw yi ndaw yi muna yobu dekk bi fiñ ko bëgg yobu ndax du di len won ci rek di len wax di rajep suma wax du yagga suma kaddu du yagga waye ñu ngay dem ci campagne di ngeen ñu dégg bu baaxa baaxa baax taxaw leen jog leen sen dikk ndor yi sen rakay sen magi sen xariti o leen this is unity we are here to unite amuñ tribe amuñ het amuñ religion man akula way dama bok ci het yep so this is not about tribe this is about your future not only the future of the kids but you as well this is your future and we are about to make history so be part of that history jerelen jeff thank you Thank you.
nous avons fait un peu de nous avons fait Honorable Bakar Bunja Dabo, Mopatiam, Dambia for All, Nyo Nani, Nia de Nyo Support, United Democratic Party, J. Alexan Binyo, Danyo Muna Am, Changes, Changes, Yo Hamne, Do Naka Change Drag Pur Palace, Why Change Bo Hamne, Find Naka Pur Jurin Yo. Lol Heavy, Marita Mpon, Biri, Halad Gambia, Halad Chofen Bum Amir Gambia, Halat Lanla Enel, Kudomami, Akusetami, Setsetatami, Ne Mandam, Nadam Tahao, Nadam Democratic Party, Nda, New Disney, Lifineka, Mugenafi, Marie, Nyola Chegre, for your sense of patriotism, Uga, Sareo, Moran Katili, Feko Uga, Sareo, Hamna, le le ASD, candidate, je suis sure, sure, que nous avons Akinata Democratic Party, you don't have to abandon your party. New Orleans, work with us so that country be new redeem. New redeem country be, and that will give Kepa Kunaka the opportunity to organize a party in a proper way. Mohamne, you will not be suppressed in a very subtle way. Because suppression, Nakuna Ranga Tau, Dalchiko Nip, Sanukosi Birkasu. No, there are certain ways for Hamne, the guy suppressed it. Can do this, working as suppressed. Momoko Yek, this day, the man that lonely, the man never do it. The Lulu, Lime Buga Ginichi Rumi. Underscore at the point, like young people here, the youth, the women, younger Hamne, that demography, younger Hamne, young. You are gonna have importance in our society are being marginalized. The opportunity now to give them prime place in this country is to make sure that on the 4th of December 2021, we elect a government that is going to be responsible, that is going to be responsive, that is going to be sensitive to the concerns of this group of people. Marginalization will now stop. We cannot continue to treat 
the youth and the women in this country as scheme makers. You know, tattoo, you know, fetch, you know, fetch. No, it has to go beyond that. We have to do more than that for the Gambian women. We have to give them a position for them that they realize that we are the ones who matter in this country, not you, Mr. Dabo. We make you what you are, so we are the ones who matter. The Lolo, you can only have such an orientation, Sifeke, you have. We are willing and we will be willing and we continue to be willing to work with you. The campaign trail is there. We all want to go out and campaign. Yesterday I was with GFA. Hopefully tomorrow. If, uh, if we have not decided yet whether we'll continue campaigning tomorrow, but hopefully tomorrow, when we do, we hope to have Marisok with us on the campaign trail. And when we are, and when we are in the countryside, we hope to have you or some members of the ASD with us in the provinces, so that together we talk to our people. Together, we make our people vote for another democratic party. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Nilaftaka kodo mutaka bonang UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland, and Indian Banku to Malmu Meto, Supersonic Slate Adulati. Anada di Masanji Jama Gambia Bankokam is a kodo tanole ibedao da bidding katong for koina and dung batatiji. Hade batatiji is a kodo tanole kabonam bantala banko to bidding UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland, and Indian Banku to Malmu Beto, Nadoku Sone yata, Atariata, Akoita, and dung a 
alanna yata gambia banko kan supersonics leading kiral siata katambi nyin tumal mu meti supersonics be banko tay sabani nani la to fata findu banko to dum ila google play store to wala ila apple app sign sign ye supersonics la money transfer app download pour ke ifa mu na fang na safi sol la